Yeah, good morning, everyone. My name is Aldi Abilawa. I'm the staff at IMS FAP WME. It's a precious uh, chance for me to be your uh, master of ceremony on this very special occasion. The guest lecture of uh, uh, Malaysia. Malaysia. Marketing management um, with the topic of the halal marketing. First of all, let's reciting our gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who give us this grace in the form of guidance, healthy and mercy, so we can attend the practice and participate in this special event without any obstacle. Uh, salawat and salam upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who had brought us from the path of darkness to the path of light. I, I also would like to welcome Professor Dr. Sani Tanuri bin Moh. Mokhtar as our speaker today from the University of Uttara Malaysia and also welcome to the Dr. Inda Fatmawati as our moderator today from the University Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta and all of the audience who join on this special event. Uh, yeah, on this special on this special event we have several agenda as follow. The first will be the opening. The second will be the material about the halal marketing that will be delivered by Professor Dr. Sani Sanuri bin Mohtar from the University of Utara Malaysia. And the third uh, agenda will be the discussion that will be uh, guided by Dr. Inda Fatmati as our moderator. And the last one will be the closing. Well, first, without wasting our time, let's begin uh, this event by reciting Basmala. Bismillah, Rahman. And then we move to the next agenda. Uh, is the main topic that will be delivered by our speaker, uh, Professor Dr. Sani Sanuri bin Moh, uh, Moh Mohtar from the University of Utara Malaysia uh, about the halal marketing. Uh, Prof. Sani, time is yours. Okay, thank you, uh, Pak Audi, uh, Dr. Indah, and all the <coughs> students and guests uh, that have invited me uh, to give a lecture on the topic on halal marketing. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very Waalaikumsalam. Uh, let me share the slide first. Huh? Can everyone see the slide? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. This is a topic on halal marketing uh, concept and strategies. Um, I will go through the lectures about probably um, 30 to 40 minutes. Um, uh, just the moderator, maybe you can stop me if I exceed that uh, time. So we can have time uh, to do probably discussion or anything else after that. Uh, I know that many of you have gone through many lectures uh, through online. Uh, are, are you still using online, isn't it? They, 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 they still no physical uh, uh, lecture yet. So and then, mix, Prof, yeah. we mix between offline and online. Oh, okay, mix, huh? All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I think that uh, the challenges of using online is uh, higher as compared to offline, okay, because yeah. the <laughs> level of concentration uh, will be yes. less right. as compared to offline, okay. So uh, let me uh, go through uh, this halal marketing concept strategies. I am, uh, this is, I mean, that halal marketing is not a new concept, but, but uh, it is still. I think that need to be promoted further, okay. Uh, especially, I mean that um, there's a lot of potential on halal marketing on this. So I have not given a lecture before halal marketing. This is my first time to give a lecture on halal marketing. Basically, because uh, this is a new thing, and at the same time, uh, I have written a book on this halal marketing. So I just want to share with you about this halal marketing concept and strategies. Okay, <clears throat> basically, uh, 
sometimes uh, the, the the term halal marketing also can also be considered as Islamic Islamic marketing, but halal is more well known uh, in the world uh, as compared to Islamic uh, because uh, it's a universal term, uh, especially it relates to uh, the food. Okay, but halal is not only food, but it can be in many aspects. Okay, why, why, I mean that uh, this kind of concept of halal marketing, I mean that has come to the place. Okay, so this is uh, particularly because of this uh, faith-based marketing. Okay, it is, it's not about uh, just a particular religion, but any religion, I mean that uh, every, I mean that followers, they, 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 they tend, I mean, that to be inclined to their religious. And also, uh, this is something that uh, many people would like to have to relate to their religion. So, uh, besides uh, in the Islamic aspect, I mean, that if you, I mean, that if you go to certain, certain places, religious places, such as uh, the Buddha temple or this kind of things, they will sell, I mean, that, uh, product which is related, I mean that to to the religion or to to, to their faith, such as Buddha Panda religious to be designed. Okay, so this religious symbol attract purchasing decision. Okay, so uh, the same thing. Okay, we with uh, okay, so we would like to have uh, something that relate to our faith. So we will uh, try to purchase something which may relate to our faith. Uh, but in Islam, it's more than that because it's something that we, we, we must and we have to. Okay, rather than, I mean, uh, it's something uh, that we intend. Okay. Okay, basically, uh, you can see here, uh, Consumer behaviors also are changes in technology, the economic society, for example, uh, McDonald's, okay? McDonald's in US, okay, they have their own uh, culture, uh, their own products that relate to the consumers in US. Uh, it, uh, probably, I mean, that yes, maybe they have a certain, certain, uh, certain, certain product which is more uh, westernized. In India, I mean that sometimes they put no beef, okay, because the the beef is quite uh, something religious to them, okay. Uh, in, in in Malaysia also, if di different, uh, for for example, in Malaysia we have a certain certain I mean that uh, product in McDonald which is specifically uh, relate to the culture, such as uh, nasi lemak. Uh, I'm not sure in Indonesia whether you have this, this or not. And, and, and uh, I mean that the, the, the chicken, you, you have a spicy version uh, and also the chili sauce. I think it should be the same huh? in some, in some uh, Indonesia places. Okay, but, but uh, I have been to Indonesia, to many places in Indonesia. Uh, some uh, places in Indonesia, I mean that you, you didn't eat uh, spicy uh, food. Some places you eat spicy food. Okay, so, so, uh, I mean that, for example, in Sumatra, in, in Padang, I mean that they eat uh, quite spicy food, okay, as compared to uh, in, in Jawa. Okay, so I think, I think uh, it depends on the culture in the context, but McDonald's, I mean that they have put in something that suit the consumer's consumption. Uh, especially, I mean that in the Muslim majority countries, okay, if they can cater for a halal uh, product, Okay, uh, for example, I think uh, it would be the same. I think in Indonesia, Indonesia also, the, the product, all McDonald's product, KFC also is halal. Okay, so this is the thing that, that can enter for consumers in the market. Uh, so this is something that we can call the customer-centric strategy. It's a specified, it's a target market that attempt to serve a certain segment. Okay, so maybe you have learned about the market segmentation. Okay, so this is a strategy of marketing. So if you can segment the market according to the culture, according to the religious difference, okay, this will add value, okay, to the product. 
So uh, yes, you know, okay, you have learned uh, in marketing, you have four P's, okay, place, promotional, product and prices. So you can come out with marketing strategies, okay, that relate to these four P's, okay, where is the location, the promotional aspect, products, prices, okay. So furthermore, I mean that in the economic environment, okay, there have been an increase of Muslim uh, around the world. Okay, so I, I will elaborate further more on this. Okay, as you can see here, I mean that uh, conventional marketing, okay, uh, normally we, what we do in marketing is that we would like to manage a profitable relationships. Okay, so this is the same. I think in Islamic marketing also, I mean that uh, we like to have a relationship with the customer. Same time with that. The conventional marketing strategic plan by top management followed by the organization functional activities. So this is something that in management, I mean that you have a functional activities, you have marketing department, human resource department, all this. So you have to do strategic plan, okay, in order to make sure that your product are able to be sellable to the consumers. And uh, in, mar in conventional marketing also, you try to provide customers with the best possible attention and quality services. Okay, so this is something that, that we always do uh, in marketing so that we are able uh, to give the best services to the customer. And also in marketing, normally we try to build customer loyalty and try to satisfy their needs. Okay, so I think this is uh, a commercial marketing, but it's also applied in Islamic marketing. All Islamic marketing, they will try to apply everything on conventional marketing as long as it does not against the religion, against the Sharia rules and regulation. Okay, but on top of that, uh, the Islamic marketing, not just about fulfilling customer needs and wants. Okay, but in Islamic marketing, you have to take to account, okay, the religious perspective, uh, parameters, okay, that based on the teaching from the Quran and Sunnah. Uh, so it is a foundation of equity and justice that all Muslims need to follow. So we can say that Islamic marketing, uh, not only based on this aspect, okay, religious parameters, but also take into account all other aspects in conventional marketing, which is not against uh, the religious regulation. So you can see here, this is the novel concept uh, in Islamic marketing, so uh, the, the, the criteria such as ethical principle practice, all inclusive way of life, providing rules and guidelines in commercial activities, okay, and Quran recognized Muslim ways of life, like halal, meaning permitted, legal and lawful, okay, haram means forbidden, illegal or, or unlawful, and Islamic teaching such as honors and trading and good customer relationship. Okay, so there are a lot of opportunities in marketing. Okay, so as we can see here, okay, uh, why, okay, uh, halal marketing or Islamic marketing is something that is very valuable today because of a lot of opportunities. For example, here you can see that the global Muslim consumer spending across lifestyle sector in 2017 was US 2.1 trillion US. Food and beverage, okay, for Muslim, account for 1.3 trillion. Clothing and apparel account for US 270 billion. And uh, for traveling, traveling that relate to the Muslims, 177 billion. Okay, pharmaceutical and domestic relate to this halal, 87 billion. And media entertainment relate to halal, 209 billion. So you can see that lot of opportunities in marketing okay so if uh, the suppliers or the manufacturers or the shops that did not take into account these opportunities i mean that they will be able they will not be able okay to sell to a certain segment of people who are very likely to purchase this kind of product because uh, it is really, as we discussed before, it relates to the regions. Okay, here 
there are three trillion reasons why mainstream brands cannot ignore Muslim consumer market because it it involves about three trillion, okay, three trillion uh, uh, market. And we can see here, as Baker mentioned in 2010, okay, Muslim majority is found in more than 50 countries in Europe, Africa, and Asia, while Islam, the fastest growing religion on earth, has contributed to the global size of halal commercial which has expected to reach 30 trillion by 2050. Okay, so I think uh, in Indonesia alone, okay, you have about, about you uh, are the largest uh, Muslim uh, people uh, in, in in a particular country. You have about, about two hundred million. Okay, so you have a big, huge market in Indonesia on this matter. So that's why I mean that uh, every I mean that investor. Okay, they will try to seek for opportunities. Okay, to go for a country that have huge population. Uh, such as uh, Indonesia, India, China, all these kind of things, in order to uh, cater. To, sorry, to cater for uh, uh, Muslim uh, people. Okay, the need for Islamic marketing. Okay, uh, you can see here that uh, is because of three reasons. Okay, religious reasons. Okay, as I have mentioned before, it could be on economic reasons. Okay, uh, in order to ensure that uh, to get participation on economic transaction. So this is the things. I mean, that uh, is a huge opportunity to uh, get a new income, and also because of the legal reasons. Okay, because of certain certain countries. Okay, you have a legal reasons. For, for example, in Malaysia, I mean that uh, in order uh, for you to, to to mention that this product uh, is halal, it need to be regulated. It need to be certified. Uh, if not, you cannot claim it as halal. So, so, so this is a legal reasons. So, if is if any uh, product or, or or I mean that or shops that indicate halal without going through the law. I mean, to get it halal certified, so it is it's quite a violation in Malaysia here because it is considered as a criminal act because you have not gone through a proper channel to claim your product is halal. So in order to claim, in order to brand that product is halal, so you need to go through the halal certification. Okay, here... Uh, Okay, so so this is another uh, concept uh, about Islamic uh, marketing here. So we can see here uh, in Islamic. So we look upon the characteristics of Prophet Muhammad because I think Prophet Muhammad uh, in history before Prophet Muhammad, I mean that uh, also doing business in his early uh, time. Okay, so the characteristic of Prophet Muhammad that you need to be honest, okay, amanah, tablik, okay, uh, that you, I mean, you, you communicate, communicate the product, uh, and also you have to be true. Okay, so all the good characteristics of Prophet Muhammad. So this is something uh, that uh, should be part of the Islamic marketing. So Islam see trade as important standard of living. Islam provide rules. <laughs> including the right to wait <coughs> and restraining customer exploitation, avoiding dishonesty, deceit and fraud. This is the concept. And here, the pillars okay, of Islamic marketing is about spiritual, an idea that every business activity do needs to be in line with the teaching of the Quran and Sunnah. And at the same time also, okay, so it needs to be ethical. Clients with the Islamic standard and free from corruption and wrongdoing and realistic, okay, creative of which marketers can this. So this is something that marketers in Islam, although I mean uh, marketers, I mean that in Islamic marketing it should be spiritual, ethical, 
uh, humanistic, maintaining healthy relationship. But at the same time, I mean that uh, in Islamic, it doesn't, uh, it does not uh, forbid you to do creative marketing. Creative marketing can still be there as long as it does not against the regulation or against the rules. Creative or wish marketer is being tested for them to create a breakthrough. Okay, five core. Um, I cannot see it. I mean, the, the title here, uh, five core aspects uh, in Islamic marketing. Okay. Uh, okay. Strategy, Higma, uh, importance of clever uh, market positioning adaptable in costly changing environment with the right composite. So the five core is that the strategy must be there to position the product and also mutual consent. So it must have some mutual consent between buyers and sellers to, to, to sell the product and it should be free from undue pressure, company deception and fraud. Okay. And uh, it must provide clear and accurate information with values that benefit the human well-being. And the goods, okay, must be halal. Uh, goods they are benefic beneficial, uh, not only halal but is benefit is useful and safe to consumers because halal is something that uh, it should not be against, okay, the Sharia. But at the same time, it must be toibah. It must the good must be must be uh, safe to consume. Uh, so this is the thing uh, that that must be. Uh, uh, that must be something that can be uh, saleable to the consumers. And welfare, falah, business is not entirely directed by profit. Nevertheless, business aim should be to uphold and improve the human welfare. Okay, so so these are, these are the five cores of uh, Islamic marketing here. So you need to have all these cores in order uh, to make the product as considered as halal marketing. Okay, uh, as you know that uh, this, this is the, the four piece, uh, product, price, price, and promotion in marketing. So um, Islamic marketing also, I mean that can still use this four piece, but in a certain certain regulation, certain certain concept here. For example, okay, for product, okay, Muslim will select goods that are based on quality, convenience, and with specific verification, halal certificates from credible authorities, Okay, on pricing, uh, you can see that adjusted for the benefit of buyers at the same time, it should not harm the sellers. So that means that, yes, uh, you can, I mean, that uh, get some profit margin for the pricing, but not at a cost where buyers have to pay so high. I mean, that the, 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 is too costly for the buyers. And at the same time, cheating through unlawful earning and price discrimination is forbidden in Islam. So the pricing must be ethical, must be something that does not cause harm to the buyers. And for the promotion, okay, so in Islamic marketing, promotion must deliver, should not uh, do something that is misleading, deceptive. Advertising, manipulate, promotion, or do unethical service offering. Okay, uh, it's good that for the seller to provide samples, uh, cheaper price, and with refund assurance, build brand loyalty, better trust among the consumer consumers. So, uh, in doing promotion, I mean that certain certain characteristics or certain certain uh, rules need to be followed okay so you should not do something uh, that may do something that manipulate uh, the, the the consumers for islamic aspect in advertising you must be truthfulness spending behavior must be very uh, good criteria and advertising ethics must be there okay as the, for the place of distribution uh, selection of distribution channels must be timely and delivery. Okay, uh, there should not be mixing halal and non-halal product. The distribution and storage process it should be avoided at all costs. 
and logistic services activity must comply with the Sharia law. Okay, so you can see that all these four FPs can be applied. <laughs> but it has to follow according to the certain rules and regulation. Okay, we go to another topic or rising concept of uh, halal globally. Okay, halal concept need not necessarily cover food product. Okay, normally we talk about food, but it can also include category of non products and uh, such as toiletry products and personal body care. And at the same time, okay, you should be prepared in a hygienic manner of good quality, nutritious for a healthy body and mind so that they will be able to contribute to knowledge, skills and effort to society. Okay. And Muslim consumers are prohibited from consuming certain food that is of dirt, gills and indigent material that are prohibited in Islam. Fewer cases of food poisoning and contamination have been reported by the consumption of halal food. So you see that uh, if uh, the food is halal, I mean that uh, there will be few, few, few cases of food poisoning because halal should be safe, okay, should be good to the consumers. Okay, uh, you can see here, okay, there are many categories or aspects of halal. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, just only halal food, okay. But at the same time, we, we, there is an opportunity to go for halal tourism. Okay, lifestyle practices like destination, target consumer product and service offering. Uh, I'm not sure in Indonesia, but in Malaysia, there are few hotels. Uh, they are compliant to Sharia. They are, they are called uh, Sharia compliant hotel. I mean that, so that means that they will not serve any food which is non halal. Uh, but at the same time, okay, uh, they have many, many aspects uh, of uh, services where they are friendly to the Muslims, okay, and they have a uh, prayer room, I mean, that they, they, they will put in all uh, the prayer uh, mat in the, in, uh, in the room, I mean that they, they, they will do certain certain aspects of services which will be friendly to the Muslim. So they 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 they, they are called Sharia compliant hotels. Okay, and tourism also. I uh, mean that uh, certain certain package of tourism. Uh, when you go to the agents, uh, you can see that uh, they will serve uh, halal product halal food and I mean that they will go to certain places places which is halal okay uh, such as I mean that uh, if you go to probably to uh, Vietnam there uh, they are agent which says that they serve halal food I mean that halal everything is halal so halal tourism so this is the thing so it caters many many consumers market here certain certain segment because they are Certain certain segment of consumers, people, uh, uh, I mean that uh, Islamic people, they would like to have this kind of product because they will not be worried about anything which is non-halal anymore if they go for tourism, if they travel. Okay, so so this is an opportunity uh, evolve for business market uh, and also wellness product. Okay, so you can see that makeup brands, okay, cosmetic, beauty salon, spas, okay, so if it follows the Islamic practices, okay, so uh, I mean that the consumer will not have to be worried. They, they are using, they are not using uh, uh, non-halal product such as makeup, cosmetic, cosmetic, okay, and, and also in beauty salon and spas, okay, so this will cater okay to certain certain group uh, for example uh, for uh, female okay muslim muslimah okay when they go to beauty salon and spa okay they will be sure okay their uh, their aurat i mean their, their everything will be uh, will be taken into uh, place and also modest fashion okay you know that uh, yeah, yeah, they are growing yeah. growing uh, fashion on this uh, hijab okay on uh, scarf head scarf or this kind of things and there are many fashion on this 
Okay, so this is another opportunity for business, okay, to get involved into this. And there are many, uh, there are, this Hala stamp product certified is very popular because it's a symbol of quality assurance. Uh, Non-Muslim consumer have accepted the fact that Hala stamp product bring many health benefits. You can see that even non-Muslim today, they prefer to go for this halal stamp product or halal certified product because they, they are sure that when you have this halal certified product it will be not only uh, benefits in terms of uh, uh, it is halal but also it gives benefits such as health, safe and very clean products and it will boost product marketability compared to competitors uh, we wish we, we, we that have that yeah, that have that are without halal certification. So as compared to competitors without halal certification, so it will give some uh, uh, advantage to the business that have halal certification. And it also guarantee product legality and security beside providing higher set of security to the Muslim consumers. And certified halal logo has now become a representation of quality measurement. So when you see that there is halal logo. Is an assured that this product is a quality product. Uh, so not only it made the religious fulfillment, but it also is a quality product. So that's why this uh, halal step product has become popular nowadays. And halal also logo also is also as considered as a safety benchmark. Okay, uh, you can see here that halal logo as a safety benchmark in terms of uh, food premises practice, safety hygiene, and the sector product is halal guaranteed certified. Okay, frontline workers like waiter, waiters, and kitchen staff uh, practice safer and better product consumption, and also popular among the non music community to those, okay, uh, are health conscious. I got stuck. Okay, so uh, halal purchasing process, I think is the same uh, as compared to uh, the, the normal purchasing process, but uh, the only thing is that it must be halal. So determine specification, halal certified, raw item, okay, select supplier, halal packaging, halal processes, okay, at the same time, okay, see that uh, contract, uh, clear clauses about the halal certification, terms of supply and delivery, an order tertiary packaging is required to retain the halal status, okay, and uh, expedite and evaluate, check the halal mark or code on the uh, on the consignment, okay, and uh, follow up and evaluate monitoring and validity of the certificate. So this is the purchasing of halal process. Oh, my. My slide is, is hang right now. <laughs> so let me stop sharing for a while. Uh, try to share it again. So how much more time that we have here? Just a little bit more. Yes, sir. You still have time. Okay. Okay, rising demand eh, for halal product. You can see here, halal food products are viewed as healthy diet. Okay, uh, preferred by vegan committee. Okay, so those who are, I mean, that vegetarian. Okay, uh, sometimes they prefer halal food. Okay, halal value added product industry that interesting in starting or expanding the food production process, and marketing to halal consumers. Okay, Malaysia and Malaysia, for instance, have have government approved halal programs. Okay and uh, site registration, okay, uh, annual halal certificate, best certificate, and shipment certificate. Okay, marketing strategy development for Muslim consumers. Uh, you can see here that uh, uh, market sizing, uh, determine where there is a sellable Muslim market or customer market potential arriving at your decision market sizing, and consider the following teams, halal food, prior situation, gender nuances, at the same time, uh, main level of customization, choose from mainstream, no customization, 
and marketing strategy. I, I will not go too in detail on this because uh, uh, there, there are another slide on this. Okay, for example, the customization, customization strategy, okay, in order to customize uh, because we, when, we, when we show that we want to do this halal product, halal marketing, we need to customize. If there's no customization, I mean that the product is fit to all. Okay, and also it's unique to media access. So when you do the customize, everything must be unique. Unique media access, unique messaging, uh, mainstream product extension, and unique branding. Okay, so uh, this is another aspect uh, of marketing strategy. So channel strategy, social media, religious media, print or electronic media, and unique communication strategy should be complied with Islamic principle, values and sensitivity to level, level of effectiveness and market positioning motive, uh, motive behind the development of effective marketing strategy. It's always stuck, huh? sorry. Is hang all over. Okay, uh, we go to the halal fashion industry here. You can see here, uh, Muslim spend on closing was 270 billion. So it was forecasted in 2023, it will reach to about 361 billion on halal fashion industry. Uh, it's saying again. Okay, halal fashion industry here. Awareness of modest consumers is increasing. Trends seeking for brands that adapt to their diversity, culture, and fashion needs, and opportunity for fashion designers, modeling agencies, and companies. Okay, so you can see here. Okay, there are a lot of opportunities in halal fashion industry. Okay, uh, because you need to cater for Muslims. Muslims, I mean that, for example, uh, you need uh, some head scarf, loose fitted trousers, and full slip full slip shirts for Muslima. So this is the thing. Okay, that will uh, lead to higher uh, opportunities for businesses to go for this halal fashion industry. For example here, uh, Shiseido, Inza, Tokyo, okay, Japan beauty brand is certified as halal. Okay, so this is something, okay, that will attract Muslim consumers uh, to purchase this beauty brand. Okay, halal cosmetic and personal care. So, uh, it has opportunity for best, best product, deodorants. <coughs> Skin care cream, perfume, lotion, powders, and facial makeup. Okay, and halal cosmetic and personal care are free from any porcin by product, derivatives, and alcohol. Substance contain nano particles. Sorry, so we can cost. see the slide. You, you can see the slide? Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we cannot see the slide. Maybe you can share your PPT to us and then uh, we can share for you. Prof. Yeah. Mm. You can okay. share the file and then uh, maybe our staff can share the PPT. Uh, can you see now? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, this is the thing that I, I just uh, mentioned just now. Uh, that halal cosmetic, you have many, many um, opportunities uh, because of uh, this, uh, I mean, that cosmetic and personal care is a growing business. Okay, it is something that uh, can cater to Muslim consumers uh, on cosmetic. Uh, for example, here, okay, you have uh, several examples here of cosmetic, which is halal, like Kaidi, Wardah, Iba Halal, or these kind of things. Oh, this is the thing. Um, I got stuck again. <laughs> I'm not sure why. 
maybe you can uh, send me your PPT and I will share it for you. Uh, how do how do I share to you? Uh, through chat room. Yeah, there's a chat room in the in the Zoom, and you can just send it to me. Uh, okay. Uh, maybe I'll try to. Uh, can can I go in into another uh, computer for a while? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oke okay, teman-teman mungkin sambil menunggu ini uh, kami mengingatkan untuk teman-teman ayo silahkan diisi attendance listnya uh, this is the first session of the attendance list uh, there will be the second uh, attendance list in the end of the uh, material uh, when we have a discussion so please make sure that you uh, stay tuned on the zoom uh, and also don't forget to sign yourself in the attendance list If you have any question, you just you can just put it in the chat, in the column chat, and we will discuss it in the discussion session. Jadi, nanti kalau misalnya teman-teman punya pertanyaan, teman-teman bisa masukin di kolom chat. Uh, nanti bakal dibahas di sesi diskusi. Uh, the PowerPoint has been appeared, sir. We can see your PowerPoint right now. Okay. Uh, Maybe may, may I mute one of your account? Yes. yes. Uh, which one will you use? Uh, I will use this one. Okay, okay. Done, sir. Let me see yours. Okay. Can you hear me? All right. Yes, yes, sir. This is better. So, uh, can, I, I mute, isn't it? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, sir. Oh, okay. Right. Loud and clear. So, I, I can't hear you. Okay, so uh, there's an echo, eh? Is there an echo? No, sir, no. No? I, uh, I've been uh, mute one of your accounts, so yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, Halas Cosmetic and Personal Care. Uh, Halas Cosmetic and Product not be tested on animals produced using natural ingredients and free from albumin. I hear an echo. Yeah, still a little bit echo. Uh, maybe you can uh, turn off one of the sounds of your computer or laptop, maybe. Yeah, probably I need to.
Can you hear me? Yes, bro. Oh, yeah. Okay, halal travel. Okay, this is another thing. Uh, I have mentioned before about this. Uh, okay. I'm sorry, sir. Your your PPT is not up here. Huh? Uh, I cannot see your PPT. You cannot hear me? Uh, the PPT, the PowerPoint. I cannot see oh, your you PowerPoint. Can see. Uh. Oh, the PowerPoint. Oh, okay. Can you see now? Yes, we can. Okay, okay so uh, halal travel, providing halal accommodation, relevant logistics, and halal food to cater Muslim travel needs. I have discussed before about this. And in Muslim minority countries, uh, major driver for economic growth, for example, New Zealand, Japan, Korea, and China. I mean, that these are the countries uh, that they really prefer to be, I mean, that they, they, they like about this halal kind of things, although they are uh, Muslim minority countries. Okay, uh, even in Japan, I mean, they, they are a very way uh, today about this halal, uh, halal things, uh, also in New Zealand and Korea. So, this is the thing, an opportunity, okay, for uh, business to go for this halal travel. And then, halal logistics, I mentioned before, uh, product according all the supply chain must be according to the standard. Uh, the Islamic principle is not must not be contaminated with non-halal items uh, during the supply chain process. And uh, for branding, you can see that Islamic marketing is totally against coercive tactics and strategies. Uh, it, 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 when you do branding, you do marketing, you should not you not should not force people. I mean that to go for your product too aggressively. I mean that. Yeah, it will put under uh, people under pressure to purchase your product. So this is something uh, that need to be to take into account. Okay, example of uh, consumer marketing such as like creating a burden on consumer, extending delivery delay and higher prices, misleading and false advertising, forbid the use of emotional, sexual, actual and fear. Okay, misusing images of women as stereotyping. Okay, act of enticing the customer. Okay, so you. Uh, do something that mislead the customer to buy okay and also sometimes limited time promotion discount pricing strategy uh, sometimes probably i mean that you try to put limited time promotion uh, too 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 few maybe one or two item only and after that people have come along to to your shop and they, they see that it's not more available and you have you tend to purchase other thing which is not uh, a promotion item. So this is the thing, eh? something that, that need to do into account so that uh, in, in summit marketing, coercive marketing should not uh, be there. Okay, so all these issues must be taken into care. Okay, so potential for Islamic market, as we uh, I have mentioned before, there's a lot of potential. Uh, by 2020, global Muslim projects expected to increase at the rate of 35%. Rising 2.2 billion of the world's total projected population of 8.3 billion, about 60% of Muslims reside in the Asia Pacific, and 20% of them reside in the Middle East and Africa. And growing and neglected market. So this is a growing market, but it has been neglected, okay, uh, in many many countries, okay. But uh, you can see that nowadays. Fast food chains such as uh, McDonald's, KFC, okay, they have already subway have opened in Muslim countries, so they need uh, to take into account this kind of aspect. Cosmetic brand, okay, like L'Oreal and Unilever also has entered Islamic countries, and halal concern with the vegan who are non-Muslims, okay, and you can see that halal certified cosmetic care product carry organic vegan ethical tag like cruelty free. Also, this is the thing. Eh? Uh, sometimes halal is not. Uh, is halal but also at the same time it carries uh, a good thing like something which is more organic sustainable uh, using the, the sustainable development goals or something like that south korea has already established a halal hub in malaysia in the state of johor for research okay 
And as you can see that popular homegrown brands such as dark cosmetics, simplicity, all these kind of things. Okay, so they are really, I mean, that focus on uh, the Muslim fashions. High quality local halal brand help to promote the national image. And you can see that a lot of opportunities in food and beverage, uh, companies initiative to gain halal selection of the Swiss product. On education, I mean, there's a need, I mean, to educate consumers, okay, to through public campaign, media, television, internet, I mean, to purchase this kind of uh, halal product. Government's role to deliver effective food safety education and directed toward all consumers from different religious beliefs. Okay, so there's a need to educate more any population, the consumers, everything about this Islamic branding and marketing. Okay, uh, okay, we have discussed about this. Okay, so I just keep on this. Okay, uh, you can see the entertainment business also. Okay, there's a lot of opportunity there. Uh, religious information, drama and movie are just related to this channel. Digital product and services, you can see that uh, even in our apps, uh, our mobile phone, there's a lot of Islamic uh, apps there. Uh, like, for example, the Qibla indicator, Quranic application, all this. So all this Islamic online digital, you can see that there's a lot of huge opportunity in Islamic branding and marketing. Okay, financial product, I think this is have been there for quite some time. Uh, we have the Islamic banking, okay, uh, where the Islamic day is something that has gone big uh, in, in, in financial. Uh, for example, in Malaysia here, I mean that almost all the banks, uh, they have uh, not only the commercial, uh, there are certain, certain banks which is totally Islamic, but uh, for other banks, not only they offer conventional uh, uh, banking, but they has also another window which is Islamic banking. Okay, so so this is something that has grown uh, very huge, and it has opportunities to. I mean, uh, in in many Europe countries, uh, some Europe countries also have also tie okay to to have uh, this Islamic financial product and services. And uh, like the uh, Islamic lifestyle products, as I mentioned before, demand for hijab and fashion uh, models, clothing brands are getting more popular, and big international brands have started introducing models wear. Okay, but uh, challenges challenges for Islamic brand, uh, how to reach consumer when Western brand have already attained a strong brand equity. Uh, so this is something that uh, we need to question on this. Okay, we can see that some brand already have strong brand equity. Okay. So why, I mean, that they want to have this another segment of a uh, brand. How to get halal product to become a successful international brand. Uh, so this is all questions uh, that can still be researched on this matter. Acceptance of Islamic brand in the new market. Whether there is acceptance in Islamic brand in the new market. How to engage consumers about the qualities of Islamic brand. So this is another research question uh, that, that, that can uh, you can do research and see, okay, how we can overcome uh, this kind of, uh, solve this kind of problem. Accessibility by all consumer regardless of their religious faith. Okay, you can see that not all uh, religious still have faith on this. Some, I mean, that they still have uh, some uh, reservation on this halal certification or halal product. Sometimes the halal certification does not guarantee the quality of the product ingredient. This is not because of uh, halal itself, but because of the uh, the manufacturer or the business. Uh, they tend, I mean, that uh, to produce product which does not meet the halal uh, standard. Okay, so uh, drivers of global growth of halal should trust the level. Halal transition is a key factor driving the market growth and contribute to the increased demand and use of authentic halal food products. And you can see that the influence of demographic, okay, next 10 years, the Muslim community is expected to surpass the Jewish community, largest Muslim community is Indonesia, okay. Uh, the birth rate of the Muslim community is increasing while the non-Muslim birth, birth rate is declining. Okay, so uh, you can see that a lot of drivers to global growth halal, halal as traditional Islamic eating practice uh, derived from the Prophet Muhammad, healthy eating practice that honey, all life, yogurt, okay, so this is something that uh, probably comes from uh, the practice 
uh, of I mean that the Prophet Muhammad. Okay, so this is something that has been mentioned uh, in uh, Quran, such as honey, all only for this kind of thing, which is good for health. Okay, uh, so this is something that has been promoted uh, to Muslim consumers to purchase this kind of product. Uh, you can see that uh, uh, another thing is that I mentioned safe, healthy, little additive, and have a high quality assessment, and represents specific symbols like nutritional value, safety, quality, and hygiene. Okay, as for electronic shopping, you can see that online vouchers have been increasing on the increasing Muslim lifestyle. Uh, example that uh, in certain certain uh, electronic shopping, uh, there are certain certain uh, online that focus on halal. Uh, market to promote a halal trade. Okay, so Islamic printing, okay, is a name, term, sign, symbol, or design combination that intended to identify the good or services. In Malaysia, the halal logo introduced by Malaysia Department of Islamic Development, so it must be certified by this jacket. I think in, in Indonesia is M, M, M Majlis Ulama Indonesia, MUI. Okay. Uh, main factor that determine the consumer's purchasing decision. Okay, so I think that uh, I have also touched about this advertising. Advertising must also not be manipulated. It has, should not be mislead, and it should not exploit uh, users by using sexy women as more models and abusing uh, the halal certification. Okay, so uh, there's a lot of criticism on advertising by non-Muslim consumers. Okay, so non promoting consumers also criticized on advertising, such as uh, uh, promotional of health, uh, uh, advertise, advertisement on unhealthy, unalcoholic drink, which is not good for health, controversy or controversial on unhealthy product, sensitive advertisement, sensual approach, and corrupt possible by, pro by promoting materialism. But by using halal marketing, this, all this will be taken into care. So all this will not be into taking into account. So Islam and ethics, Islam practice that some people are those who are inviting to all that is good, forbidding what is wrong and joining what is right. Okay, so uh, general rules for Islamic promotion, uh, marketers must take into account uh, cultural belief, non-customer and religious values. Uh, Sharia principle that advertisers should opt for more natural objects, uh, such as uh, this kind of thing, animal, attractive landscape, cartoon, animation. Avoid using taxi woman discounted pricing should never include element of the tariff. Okay, I think uh, uh, this is uh, I have mentioned before about this. Okay, uh, in, in another thing, uh, customer service in Islam. Uh, I mean that we should. I mean that give good service in Islam. So this is another aspect of ma uh, halal marketing. Uh, you should do politeness in selling the products uh, you should polite and smiling okay when buy or sells and islam also integrates positive uh, energy focusing on courtesy of good and polite behaviors and also positive attitudes can help to improve the customer attitude too and marketing concept uh, marketing concept consider important of customer care commercial marketing concept see the customer as a boss so this is the difference between uh, commercial and islamic marketing Okay, so uh, in, in even in in halal marketing also there is a concept for stability endorsement. Okay, uh, Prophet Muhammad recognized the need for influencer in the early stages of Islam. For example, Umar al Khattab would act as a shield from the enemies of Islam as the Muslim community needed strong and powerful men. So, uh, uh, I mean that even in those days, okay, uh, uh, the the the. Umar or Sahabat or Prophet Muhammad is considered something that uh, they, they, he will act as a shield so that uh, non-Muslim okay uh, they will not do anything that is that can harm a Muslim because they are afraid of this uh, Umar because Umar is a fearless person. Opinion play a crucial role in the new product adoption phase and celebrity adoption itself is dependent and also help the consumer make choices rather than forcing them to buy the product. Okay, so uh, uh, you can see that the letter promoted Islam by Prophet Muhammad, the system of the letter was introduced with a new product idea that is Islam. Okay, so I mean that Prophet Muhammad to Islam. 
So they 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 will do um, Prophet Muhammad sometimes will invite people to Islam okay by using letter. So this is advantages of adopting such faith. Uh, so it's a it is considered also it's a direct marketing. Okay, so sometimes I mean you will get template or brochure direct okay to the people. So this is something which is practiced long ago by Prophet Muhammad. Okay, so in order to promote Islam to people. So the same thing you want to promote product, you can direct marketing. You can probably uh, give uh, a letter, a, pro, a brochure, pamphlet or thing like that. Like that. So, okay, I think uh, this is uh, uh, halal food laws in different countries. Okay, uh, such as Malaysia is Jakim here. So if you committed offense, you will be fined maximum 200,000. In Singapore, it's Majlis Ugama Islam uh, Singapura. Okay, all the meat, poultry, and meat product which are imported into the country need approval from MUIS. Okay, uh, to improve the halal sufficient capability, MUIS e halal system in 2000. So they have introduced the halal quality management in 2008. Okay, in Indonesia, okay, you have regulatory authority which is MUI, uh, MUI, Majlis Ulama Indonesia. So they coordinate with other institutes such as Assessment Institute for Food drug and cosmetic. Okay, uh, I think uh, uh, I have gone through all uh, about this halal marketing. Uh, all this I have taken into uh, the book uh, that I have just written recently. Uh, this is this this has been uh, uh, launched. Uh, I think uh, just a few months ago. Uh, so uh, I have taken from this halal marketing book, halal concept and strategies which I have, have co-authored uh, with my colleagues uh, in Pakistan. Okay, so you can purchase it. Either you can go to UM Press, you see Utara Malaysia Press, or you can even purchase it from Shopee here, Halal Marketing Concept and Strategies, in order to get to know more about this Halal Marketing and Concept and Strategies. I think there are, there are a lot more uh, that have touched in detail, uh, but I just give an overview in this uh, marketing lecture. Okay, I think... Uh, that's all from me. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, so these are all the halal logo. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Prof, uh, for your time and your knowledge. Hopefully, it will be helpful for us, especially the students who uh, take the marketing concentration, who uh, have interest in the Islamic uh, marketing especially yeah halal marketing and yeah maybe we can move to the next agenda is the discussion session that will be guided by our moderator uh, Dr. Indah Fatmawati time is yours ma'am okay uh, thank you Aldi and thank you Prof. Sani for your very uh, comprehensive uh, presentation about halal marketing uh, my dear students please uh, the time is yours. You can deliver your question directly, or maybe you can put your question in the chat box. Okay. Ma'am, I want to ask something. Okay. Elena, Laili? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Elena, please. Okay. Let me introduce myself first. My name is Elena Laili Indakuri. I'm from NFSA. Uh, I just want to uh, ask uh, if we make a new product and then we want to get a halal certificate, is it difficult to get? And I just want to know the steps to get that. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you, uh, Elena. Uh, I think uh, it depends on the country. Okay. Uh, certain country, they have their own uh, regulations. Um, I'm not sure in Indonesia, maybe you have a certain certain regulations, but in Malaysia here, I mean that you have to go to one particular body that I mentioned is uh, JAKIM. Okay, so uh, the process, I mean that uh, you have to need to apply and at the same time, I mean that uh, the, the, the authority will go and check, okay, the places, the ingredients, the product, everything. Uh, so uh, they have a certain certain process and rules and regulation where they take into consideration all aspects to ensure that the product can be certified as halal. The important thing is that they have uh, the right 
I mean that the, the right people. I mean that the one, the authority, I mean that they must have uh, someone who are a skilled person or who are uh, someone who are qualified uh, to determine whether the product is halal or not. Uh, so this is the thing. So the process must go on uh, in order to make sure that the halal, uh, I mean that the product or the business get the certified product. So it depends. Uh, it depends on the type of business. Some business uh, probably it will take a shorter time. Some business will take a longer time. Uh, for example, like uh, manufacturing of product. So you need to take into account not only the process that you uh, develop or you make the product, but also the supplier, okay, where you get the ingredients from. Uh, so all this aspect must take into account. Uh, so even, I mean, that the authority will audit the supplier so that the supplier will uh, only supply product which is uh, make the halal standards. I hope I answer your question, Alina. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. And uh, thank you, Alina. Uh, any other question maybe from other students? Okay. Uh, Prof, while we wait for the, the other question, maybe uh, I'd like to uh, discuss an interesting issue in Indonesia, Prof. Uh, yeah. Here in our country, uh, we have a leading brand in cosmetic, which uh, branded as Halal Cosmetic. But uh, actually, the brand uh, does not only bought by those who are Muslim, but uh, also uh, bought by those who are not Muslim. And uh, they no longer consider the, the Halal aspect of the product, but because of they consider maybe other uh, the ingredient that uh, it is fit with their uh, skin condition, for example, or maybe uh, because of the color of the brand and so on. Uh, what do you think, sir? Uh, I mean, uh, it means, uh, do you think that a halal brand uh, will, will limit the, the market of the product or how is your opinion? Okay, thank you, uh, Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think that um, ha, ha, halal is something that is, uh, uh, although it has a certain parameters that need to be met, but at the yeah. same time, uh, if, I mean, that if all the ingredients uh, or other aspect of the product, which, I mean, that uh, are clean, I mean, that does not have any, any uh, things that, may harm the product or something that is uh, really that uh, is very clear from uh, something that, that can be considered as uh, non-halal. So it is, is considered as halal, although okay. it, it does not being certified. Okay, but the only thing that the halal certificate will ensure uh, that uh, it can be marketed globally further higher on this matter uh, so so this is something that 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 uh, it depends on the perception of the consumers because some consumers when they see this kind of uh, halal logo they only assured because someone has audited it someone scholars has audited it and uh, you you can ensure that uh, this is something that uh, whatever it is that the, the, the owners will be on those authority who has already audited it, not to the consumers anymore if you consume it. But uh, for if the, uh, the product is not being certified halal, so the owners will be on the consumer. The consumer have to check the ingredient, everything must, yeah. everything must be set clean. So this is the same thing. If we go to uh, Western countries, Normally, which is difficult to get, uh, you can see that the product has halal certificate. Yeah, yeah. Halal but certificate. The ingredient, yes. if you look through, and you see that there is no any non halal ingredient is there, so you can use it. You can, you, if you are sure, then you can consume it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Prof. Uh, we have a question 
in our chat box, Prof. How to educate your target audience to buy or use halal product? As you know, maybe even Muslim, some Muslim uh, ignore that. I mean, ignore, maybe ignore the halal aspect, halal awareness, maybe. Yeah, uh, this is something uh, related to uh, uh, awareness or education. Okay, so you need you need to educate them. Okay, this is something. That's why I mean that. Uh, uh, I, 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 this is one of my objectives. That's why I come up with this kind this kind of book. Uh, okay. This book is not meant to sell to the Muslim consumers, but I mm. this book we will export it. Uh, I mean, because this there is a growing demand from Japan, especially they want this halal uh, concept, halal book. That's why I was uh, invited by the editor to write this kind of book because they want to sell uh, to to educate the halal uh, to the to the Japan population because okay. the Japan population population they they have they they are now they are they are growing in terms of awareness in terms of halal but they don't know why so that's why I mean that this is the thing education so uh, to answer your question Adija. Uh, even uh, non-Muslim also, we need to educate. Even some Muslim also, like you, you, you say that, still need to be educated because Muslim also have different practices. The implementation of practices, the uh, knowledge of Islam is different from one another to another, although uh, we are a Muslim. <laughs> okay, so this okay. is the thing. So we still need time yeah, to, to raise our society awareness about the... Yeah. The importance of halal aspect. Yeah. Okay. Any other question, Adi Adi? Please, uh, you can raise your hand. Okay, uh, Prof. I have another question, Prof. While uh, waiting for our students' question, uh, in Indonesia, this is uh, the cases in Indonesia, Prof. Um, we have a type, a certain type of financial services which uh, apply uh, Sharia principle, uh, which is uh, different from those uh, who applied in Sharia banks. So uh, they claim that uh, Sharia banks, most of Sharia banks in Indonesia uh, doesn't apply a fully Sharia practices because of a fully Sharia practices should be uh, like if we, if we borrow money to, to buy a house, the house should be bought by the bank and we receive the, the mm. house from the bank. So yeah. this is like a direct exchange, mm. uh, not in, in the form of money. Mm. And uh, we have here uh, uh, in our university, we have a financial uh, institution which uh, apply a fully Sharia practices uh, but in the form of cooperative. So uh, what do you think, sir, uh, in Malaysia, uh, do all of Sharia banks also apply a fully Sharia practice or maybe they still uh, apply like, uh, like non-Sharia banks? Mm. Okay, in Malaysia, I mean that in order to be considered uh, the bank as Sharia compliant, okay, okay. so... Uh, uh, they they need to have a sh I mean that uh, a Sharia council in that particular yeah. bank. Okay, so that Sharia council is appointed. Uh, I mean that they are religious scholars. I mean that is point uh, is certified by by uh, by the national bank or this kind of something like that. So I mean that they have to be in the council and they have to advise the bank so that the bank will be able to uh, come out. Uh, promote product which is Sharia compliant. So okay. this is the must in order to be considered as a Sharia uh, Islamic banks or selling the financial product. So the Sharia council must be there. If not, I mean that they, they are not considered as uh, as as uh, Sharia compliant to the financial products. Uh, so so this is the thing that I, I'm not sure in Indonesia. I think do you have that uh -huh. kind of things? I mean, I... Uh, so it is uh, the central bank who decided whether whether it is uh, already comply the Sharia requirement. Yeah. 
in the Malaysia. Cent yeah, oh. the central okay. bank. But, uh, I mean that uh, the the, the uh, but at the same time, uh, the Islamic. Uh, I mean that those bank. I mean that they need to follow certain certain rules regulation. Yeah, such yeah. as Sharia Council that I mentioned, uh, in order for the national bank to certify that uh, this bank is a, a Sharia. Islamic okay. Bank. Yeah. Okay, because of uh, in Indonesia we still have like uh, what is it a different different opinion about the practice of Sharia bank. Uh, mm -hmm. Some some uh, some group of maybe of organization of some group of uh, society uh, perceive that uh, Sharia banks, which uh, conducted by by national banks in Indonesia, not fully. Uh, comply the Sharia practice requirement. Mm. Uh, they just uh, put the the brand of Sharia in their bank in their bank services. All right. Okay. Yeah, this is the problem in our uh, country. Uh, uh, okay. Are there any other question? Maybe are there? Hello, from uh, my marketing students. If you can speak bahasa Indonesia also, if you. Oh yeah, uh, adik, adik yeah. silakan uh, pertanyaannya bisa disampaikan dalam bahasa Indonesia. Masih Prof. masih belum paham lagi. Okay, thank <laughs> you, Prof. Sama saja bahasanya. Ya. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Silakan, adik adik. Okay, uh, we also have uh, Mr. Radian here. He is our director of our international program. Oh, I'd yeah. like Dr. to you with are the one Dr. Radian. Tech. Hello, Dr. Radian. Are you here? Pak Radian, join nggak uh, Aldi? Silakan, adik-adik ada pertanyaan lebih lanjut. Yusron, hello Yusron. Oh yes, ma'am. <laughs> Why you use run? Oh, fine, This you can deliver your question, use run. Uh, no, it's quite <laughs> okay. He is from operation. Any other student from marketing? Hello, I think they all understand already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, uh, Aldi. Waktu kita sampai jam berapa, Aldi? Sampai, sebenarnya masih ada waktu nanti sampai setengah satu aja. Hmm. Oh gitu, oke. Oke. Oke, saya ingin bertanya pertanyaan. Ya, tentu saja. Oke, 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 saya nama Aldi, Aldi dan saya dari Island Lombok. Uh, Island. Saya di Lombok Island, dan Lombok Island is promoting the halal tourism. And one the thing is, uh, Lombok Island is uh, geographically in the east side of Bali Island. And Bali Island, you know that uh, they are playing the uh, how to say like conventional tourism. So basically, they mm. yeah, they still selling the alcohol and the things. Mm. And usually, the tourists who come who came to the Indonesia, they will spend and in the uh, in Bali Island. After that, they will move to the Lombok Island. After that, uh, mm. most of the tourists. And what do you think about uh, about this? Is it will ruin the marketing uh, halal marketing that uh, our island try to do? Uh, because yeah, it's uh, Lombok and Bali is one package. Uh, what do you think about that? Yeah, I, I think uh, there is another segmentation. Maybe the Lombok island uh, can can introduce that kind of thing. But Bali, everybody knows Bali already. Uh, been, uh, I mean, that all over the world know about Bali. And uh, Bali, I mean that uh, uh, they 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 are related or certain certain uh, religious aspect. I mean that uh, majority of them are, are, are Hindu, isn't it? Uh, so I mean, so uh, so this is the thing. I mean that in order to promote further Lombok Island, I mean that uh, I think uh, like you mentioned, I mean that. Uh, promoting by using this uh, halal tourism is something that can uh, probably uh, make more people aware of that. Uh, even I mean, Malaysian people, I mean that everybody's only know Bali, but Lombok Island is still, I mean, that 
uh, people do not know very much. Although, I mean, that you have a beautiful beach, beautiful island there. I mean, that is almost there. And it's more, more, I mean, that friendly, I mean, that to, to uh, Muslim people. I think this is something that, 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 that can be done further. It can be promoted further uh, in order to highlight, I mean, the Lombok Island to the world. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, we have a question in the chat box, Prof. If you are a marketer or seller, what is your obligation? How, how do you ensure that the product you are providing, your marketing method is in line with Islamic principles? From, uh, I can see the, the name. Bakari. Yeah. Oh, from Bax. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is our international student from Africa. Oh, okay, okay. I, I think, uh, 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 I, I think that uh, if in order uh, to ensure that your product uh, is in line with Islamic principles, uh, as I mentioned in my lecture, I mean that you need to go through a certain certain principles and guidelines. Okay, for example, uh, we we mentioned that. Uh, the ethics must be there, okay. Uh, and and uh, if we are selling uh, a product which is related to food, I mean that it must be all according uh, to all uh, the, the the Muslims' um, uh, principles or religious. Uh, it, it, had, it need to go through all the obligations uh, that has been mentioned. At the same time, I mean that uh, if I mean that if you want to promote, I mean that uh, it should not be misleading, uh, it, sh it should not be misguiding. And, and uh, for example, uh, in terms of uh, pricing also, it must not, must not be too um, uh, obsessive, it's too excessive in terms of prices, uh, which may uh, make uh, the consumers feel uh, costly on that prices. So all these kind of uh, aspect of Islamic marketing must take into account. Okay, so there are a lot of uh, principles uh, I have I have mentioned uh, in my lecture just now. Uh, you can go through that. Uh, I, I, later I will share the slide to all of you. Okay, uh, and then I, mean, I think you you can use it as, as a guideline. Uh, marketer, this kind of guideline is. Uh, taking into care, so uh, uh, that means that uh, the, the the seller has already met the obligation of selling a product which has met the Islamic principle. Uh, but in uh, in order to make it easier for certain certain countries uh, like Malaysia here, go for halal certified. You are sure that your product is already uh, according to the Islamic principles. <coughs> Okay, uh, the next may be from Aulia. Hello, Aulia. Hello, ma'am. You can directly deliver for your question. Okay, uh, firstly, I want to introduce myself. My name is Aulia Kimamdi from MFSA. Okay, uh, I want to ask about uh, if we have a product in Indonesia and we have a certific certificate from UE, and then uh, we want to import our product to the other country, uh, other export maybe to export oh. to send our product. Yeah, and then uh, we uh, to get a. Aldi, can you catch the voice clearly? Uh, yeah, uh, I quite understand what uh, okay. he said. Uh, maybe he's saying about uh, if if we have a product in Indonesia and we already have the certificate in Indonesia, the halal certificate in Indonesia, and we want to export to another country, uh, is it a must to have the halal certificate uh, to the in the uh, in the country oh. that we export okay. the product uh, right. in okay. the host country? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. 
Okay. Um, what, what what we have seen here, I mean that uh, even in, in, in Malaysia here, uh, although I mean that uh, all product in Malaysia here is certified by JAKIM, the Halal Authority in Malaysia, but at the same time, Hal, uh, JAKIM also recognize all halal standard, certain certain halal standard in certain certain countries, not all countries. Uh, I mean that uh, halal uh, regulation bodies uh, which has met certain certain standard and criteria, JAKIM also uh, probably they have also uh, visit uh, that particular body and also uh, I mean that have looked into the process that that body has taken into account. So it's not a problem. Okay, so like MUI, MUI Indonesia is recognized by uh, Malaysian JAKIM. So you don't need to go for another certification at the host country. Okay, so uh, it's acceptable already. Uh, so uh, even I mean that halal Thailand. Okay, so it's still I mean that is considered uh, something uh, that is also I mean being recognized by the country. So I mean that uh, you don't have to go for uh, another halal certification process in the host country. Okay, so no need uh, double verification, yeah, Prof. Yeah, in the yeah. host country. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Pak Radian, hello, Pak Radian. It seems Pak Radian have question also. You raise your hand, Pak Radian. Yeah. Hello, Bu. Hello. Assalamualaikum, Prof. Tani. Uh, I always contact you. Yeah, yeah. How are you, Pak? Alhamdulillah. How are you? Uh. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Pak Sani, it's quite interesting topic at the moment today. Eh, hey, Bu, Bu Inda, can I ask directly to Pak Sani? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yes, of course. Okay. Uh, hello, marketing. Then as you have mentioned before about the non-Muslim country who are concerned about the halal business. Yeah. You mentioned about uh, Japan, Korea, New Zealand especially. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about New Zealand. I've been in New Zealand for the um, last five years because I took my, my PhD from, from New Zealand and I took the, have a relationship and also I'm working with the, one of the supplier of beef supplier in, in New Zealand. And then it is quite a big industry there. Oh, okay. so they are really concerned. They are really concerned about the halal business. Okay. Uh, about one third of a beef consumption in the world was supplied by New Zealand beef, and then um, most of them already uh, with the halal certified. Okay. My question actually is a, a little bit of contradiction with our country, especially Indonesia, because Indonesia is the largest uh, Muslim country in the world. But yeah. we are not concerned. Not, we are not really concerned about the. Yeah, we are concerned, but the, the total uh, the amount of business that we are doing with the halal halal method or maybe halal certificate is not quite as big as uh, like the non-Muslim countries. I'm talking about New Zealand. Yeah. Uh, even though, yeah, I know that uh, uh, in, in New Zealand, uh, beef population, uh, sorry, beef, sheep population is much more bigger than people population. People population, there is around only 5 million people, but uh, they have of 60 million uh, sheep and cow. Yeah. So, uh, as a, and then my question actually, what should we do uh, regarding about this uh, yeah. This phenomena, yeah. what happened about this? Uh, it should be our as a Muslim country, it should be as a pioneer to do the halal business. Yeah. But uh, once I've been there and then I saw the process to do the halal uh, bachelor in in uh, in the in, in New Zealand company, it's much more strict than uh, what we have here in Indonesia. Let's say for example, they are using the machine to cut the beef, to cut the cow and sheep. And then once uh, the when they come down to the to the ground, but uh, and then the face the face of the cow is or, or the sheep not facing the kibla is mm. categorized as not halal. Mm. Oh, okay. Mm. As, yeah, they, because uh, uh, once they they are cut the the the, the neck of, of this, and then they, they 
they move him and blah blah blah. And then once they come down to the to, to the ground and then and the, the face of the cow is not facing the keyboard is called the is not halal. And mm -hmm. in in Indonesia itself is we are, we don't have any concern about this as as the tale of this. So uh, and then yeah maybe uh, this is this is uh, we should we should work together with the government with every stakeholder related with this. But according to your two opinion, what what happened in this phenomena? Mm. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Pak Rajan. I, I, I totally agree with you. Uh, I mean that uh, non, you can see that uh, some non-Muslim countries such as uh, New Zealand, Australia, Japan, so they, I mean that although they are minority uh, in terms of uh, populations, uh, but in terms of uh, their practicing of Islam is much better than those in countries like Indonesia or Malaysia. I think because, I mean, that they are aware that uh, when you see the halal, halal is, uh, like I, I mentioned, is very much related to a safer product, to a healthy product. It is not about just halal, it's just for the religion. But you can see that the, a lot of benefits uh, from, from, from uh, having halal product. So this is something, I mean, that uh, they, uh, I mean that, uh, they, they are reading about this. Uh, they, they, they gain knowledge about this. They, they are much aware of this kind of things. That's why, I mean, that they are particular on certain, certain aspects, like you have mentioned, Pak Rayan. I, I, I think that uh, this is uh, a phenomena that, that, that I think we need, I mean, that to go back to our country and educate further our people, okay, so that uh, they are more sensitive on this kind of issues. Um, uh, even in, in, in Malaysia here, I think uh, in Malaysia, I think 90% uh, are, are Muslims. In Malaysia here, only about 60% are Muslims. So another 40% are non-Muslims. So I mean that um, uh, this is the thing. I mean that we, uh, in Malaysia here, we have, uh, in, in Muslim, we have, we have to educate these kind of things so that uh, they are more aware on these particular issues. Okay, so they will choose product which has met a certain certain standards once they are aware i mean that they know about the benefit of having this halal product i mean that uh, i mean that more people uh, even nowadays uh, in malaysia here uh, most uh, supplier or businesses which i mean that they are they are non muslim owners some of them are non muslim owners majority of them non muslim owners they have also gone to halal certified because if they want to cater for Muslim consumers, they go for is, uh, is halal certified product. Uh, so Muslim will purchase that product. Uh, I mean that although uh, they know that the owners are non-Muslim or this kind of thing because they know that when it goes through this halal certified process, they know that this product is safe, is healthy, uh, it does not have any things that can harm uh, the, 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 the health of the people. So, so I think this is the thing. Okay, So awareness on the benefits of halal, not only for the religious reason, for other reasons too. I think this is uh, the phenomena that is happening in most developed countries that is happening. Uh, so so uh, in, in terms of our country, we need to educate further on this matter. Yeah. Thank you, Pak Ryan, for the information on the New Zealand. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Pak Radian. Uh, any other question, Adik Adik? Hello. Okay. Uh, it is uh, twelve thirteen uh, now, and maybe uh, Prof Sani, we can. Uh, try to summarize maybe uh, i can exactly summarize your presentation because of it is very uh, comprehensive yeah but uh, maybe a little a little idea is that uh, halal is uh, com has comprehensive aspect yeah uh, it is very uh, universal because of uh, it give uh, benefit to all segment of the consumers however for for Muslim consumer, although uh, 
using halal product is a must, but uh, it seems uh, we still need to 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 rise yeah, to to increase our halal awareness to all of uh, our Muslim consumer because of not all of us uh, which consider to use halal product in all of our product which we consume. I mean, uh, sometimes we just, uh, we just, uh, what is it? We just guess that it should be halal without considering that it is uh, really halal from, from the beginning process until uh, the end of uh, supply chain process until the end of the consumer. Okay, uh, okay, Prof. Sunny, thank you very much for your uh, awesome presentation today. And thank you to all of uh, audience and uh, participants for your participation today. And uh, we'll back to Aldi. Aldi, uh, we can close our webinar today. Okay. Uh, for, uh, I would like to say, uh, thank you for Prof. Sunny and Dr. Indah for your time, for your knowledge, and for your guidance so we can know more about the marketing, especially the halal marketing. Uh, yeah, maybe before we close our uh, session, maybe we can have a, how to say, like take a picture, <laughs> take several picture before we close. Uh, Oke, okay, teman-teman mungkin bisa dinyalakan kameranya. Silahkan, kita foto-foto dulu. Please open your camera, Dedek. Ayo, teman-teman, silahkan dinyalakan kameranya. Regina siap ya. Oke, okay. kasih abah-abah Regina. Udah siap belum Regina? Oke, okay, teman-teman mungkin bisa turn on your camera. Uh, Ismail Abdau, Hasna Safa udah. Oke. Okay. Siap ya, satu, dua, tiga. Oke, selanjutnya next. Oke, satu, dua, Oke, ya, satu, dua, tiga. Oke, oke, teman-teman, terima kasih atas waktunya. Uh, once again, thank you for Prof. Sunny, thank you for. Dr. Indah, for your time and for your knowledge. Finally, we come to the end of this event. Uh, to close this event, let us reciting doa kifaratul majlis. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Prof. Sani. You. Thank you very you. much, Prof. Sunny. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank for your you, Mas Aldi. And your Radian. See you in the next guest lecture. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. 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 Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bu Inda. Thank you, Bu Inda. Welcome, Pak Radian. Thank you. Mbak jadi online bareng kami. Pak Radian online dari mana Pak Radian?